What is going on guys? It's Metagosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In previous videos, we talked about Streptococcus pyogenes, Streptococcus pneumoniae. Today, it's time to delve into enterococci, gram-positive cocci that are catalase-negative. With that said, now let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order for maximum understanding and retention. Are you bacteria, virus, fungus, parasite, or prion? I am a bacteria. Are you gram-positive or gram-negative? I am gram-positive. Are you a coccus or a rod? I am a coccus. I am a sphere. Are you catalase positive or catalase negative? Well, since I'm a streptococcus, I am catalase negative. Do you cause complete hemolysis, partial hemolysis, or no hemolysis? No hemolysis. Can you grow in a salt solution? Yes, I can. Congratulations, you are the enterococcus. Note, this is the old classification. The new classification has enterococcus as an entirely separate group or genus. So we have streptococci, and then you stop, and then we have enterococci as totally different genus. Back to the old classification. Let me help you memorize it. If you're alpha hemolytic, listen to this, alpha, the next question is, up token. If you are beta hemolytic, next question is base tracing. If you are gamma hemolytic, the next question is can you grow in 6.5% saline? Enterococcus, let's break that down. Entero means intestines and coccus means a sphere. Spherical bacteria that colonize your colon. Since the enterococcus colonizes the colon, they gotta be able to survive in your intestine, i.e. they gotta be bile resistant, because otherwise the bile is gonna kill them and they will not survive in your intestine for a second. But they can resist the bile, i.e. they are capable of growing and surviving and multiplying in bile. Your intestines are full of bile, you can say thank you to the liver who made it and the gallbladder who stored it. Next, if a bacteria is gonna live in the colon, it's gotta be capable of resisting the salt that you eat. Oh, so it is also sodium chloride resistant. That's why it can grow in 6.5% sodium chloride solution. Moreover, just by adding salt to your food, that does not mean that you will kill the enterococcus. Next, Enterococcus colonizes the genitourinary tract. In order for it to do this, it has to be able to survive in a wide range of change in pH, because the normal pH of your urine is between 5 and 7, which is acidic. Your urine could be alkaline, more acidic, less acidic, etc. Anyway, enterococcus is there. Next, enterococci are capable of fermenting glucose to lactic acid in a process known as fermentation, of course. That's why they have a nickname, they are lactic acid bacteria. So here's a pearl for the pros. Enterococci can survive in bile in 6.5% salt solution and in a wide range of temperature changes. This is cold, this is hot and everything in between and in a wide range of pH changes from the acidic 4.6 to the basic 9.9. .9. Does anyone remember Streptococcus pneumoniae from the last video? It was a gram-positive coccus arranged in pairs or short chains and was catalase negative. Similarly, enterococci are gram-positive cocci arranged in pairs or short chains, also catalase negative. And that's why here is the question of the day. How can we differentiate between enterococci and pneumococci? Let me know the answer in the comment section. You'll find the correct answer in the next video. Formerly, group D is tryptococci. Why D? Because they have the group D cell wall antigen. And what's that? It is something in the cell wall. It's a tachoic acid, not lipotechoic acid, because when you add the word lipo to tachoic, it means it's in the cell membrane, not the cell wall, as we talked about before. Catalase negative, gamma hemolytic, glucose fermenter. That's why if you want to kill enterococci, do not go with high salt, go with high glucose. 
because accumulation of lactic acid will be deadly to the enterococcus. Since this lovely bacteria can survive in a variety of conditions, it can grow on basically any medium. Blood, agar, chocolate, agar, why not? Examples of enterococci include enterococcus faecalis and enterococcus facium. Faecalis from feces and facium also from feces because it colonizes the colon. And urinary tract. Why should I care? Why should I be frightened? What are the virulence factors of enterococci? Adherence and resistance. Adherence to your tissue forming biofilms. There was another bacteria that we discussed before that also did the same thing. What was that? If you say Staphylococcus epidermidis, you're absolutely correct. How can the bacteria adhere to my own tissue and form biofilms? Because this bacteria has cell surface, proteins, cell membrane, glycolipids. See, membrane with lipids. Pili, plural of pilus. Some people call it the P protein gelatinase, etc. Tell me about resistance to antibiotics. Most people think that just because we say bacteria is resistant to an antibiotic, they assume that the bacteria used to be sensitive in the past, and then doctors got stupid, prescribed too many antibiotics, and now the bacteria became resistant. Well, this is true in many cases, but not all cases, because sometimes the bacteria are inherently resistant to certain antibiotics, whether we have prescribed them before or not. Example, enterococci will not respond to some penicillins like oxacillin and nafacillin. We call these the anti-staphylococcus penicillins. So they can kill stav, but they cannot kill enterococci. And the cephalosporins too will not work against enterococci if you remember your pharmacology stuff. Remember when we used to say that cephalosporins are lame because they cannot cover lame? What was the E? It was enterococcus. How can you defend yourself against the nasty enterococcus? You have your neutrophils, you have opsonization, hashtag IgG antibody, hashtag complement C3B protein. Who is at risk? The hospitalized, the immunocompromised, prolonged antibiotic use, especially if you use one of these that will never work, such as oxacillin, nafacillin, and the cephalosporins. Question, which one is more abundant in your colon and urinary tract? Is it enterococcus faecalis or facium? The answer is faecalis. Quick review of enterococcus from Picmonic. It's a gram-positive coccus. Here's the angel. When it's gram-positive, there is an angel. When it's gram-negative, there is the devil. Catalase-negative. Here's the negative cat. It can grow in salt. It can grow in bile. Enterococci are part of your normal colonic flora. Diseases include urinary tract infections, such as cystitis, and pyelonephritis. Subacute, here's the submarine. Bacterial endocarditis, here's the heart in the donut. Endocarditis. Enterococci are resistant to penicillin. The penicillin could not work. Many of them are also resistant to vancomycin. Here's the van with mice. Let's review in 10 seconds. Enterococcus is gram-positive coccus that is catalase negative. It can grow in salt. It can grow in bile. It can cause UTIs, peritonitis, endocarditis, resistant to penicillin. Many are resistant to vancomycin. These are the diseases caused by enterococcus. Please pause and review. If I have subacute bacterial endocarditis, this can lead to persistent bacteremia. So if you do a blood culture, you will find enterococcus living in my blood. When it comes to UTIs, some people have no symptoms. Some people have cystitis, so frequency, urgency, burning, dysuria, suprapubic pain and tenderness. Some people have pyelonephritis, all of the previous symptoms, plus fever, plus flank pain. Peritonitis is polymicrobial. Why do I care? Listen, there are two types of peritonitis or inflammation of the peritoneum. There is primary or spontaneous peritonitis where you have one freaking organism only, usually E. coli. In one case only, if you had cirrhosis complicated by ascites and you have clean expected peritoneum 
with one expected organism called E. coli. This peritonitis is expected and we're not going to surgery. Contrast that with the secondary, severe, stinking polymicrobial peritonitis with the famous signs of guarding rigidity, rebound tenderness, severe acute abdomen, severe high-grade fever and leukocytosis, and maybe sepsis. It could be because you have an abscess in your abdomen or diffuse breach of the abdominal viscera. We're talking perforation, we're talking after an operation, we're talking after trauma. This is a patient who ruptured a tubo ovarian abscess, ruptured ectopic pregnancy, ruptured ovarian cyst, ruptured hepatic adenoma or ruptured spleen, or ruptured appendicitis, diverticulitis, cholecystitis, hepatocell carcinoma. This is severe. This patient is going to surgery right now. This last peritonitis discussion is part of my surgery high yields course available on my website medicosisperfectsnatus.com. 23 gigabytes of content. If you want to learn more about the different types of penicillins and cephalosporins, I have a course for this, antibiotics course, where we discuss antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications, also at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. And I have a brand new course, Emergency Medicine High Yields, also on my website. You can get a 50% discount towards any course on my website by using promo code ARDS. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. In the next video, we'll talk about the diagnosis and management of enterococci. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.